Kirsten Karchmer, the period expert, and if you haven't had your first period, or even if you've just started this year, this is a perfect class for you. I'm gonna be going over the top 24 most commonly asked questions and every single thing that you need to know to be completely ready to have your first period and feel great about it. All right, so quick introduction. Uh, again, I'm Kirsten Karchmer. I was a reproductive acupuncturist for over 20 years where I helped over 10,000 women to improve their fertility and by fixing their periods. So I have a lot of experience seeing everything that you need to know basically from age about seven until 55. So I hope that this is the start of a relationship that we will have to each, with each other for a really really long time. I learned so much stuff that I jammed it all into my book that came out this year called Seeing Red. And um, and so if you want more information about any of the things that we're talking about, order the book from Amazon and, uh, and let me know what you think. Okay, question one. What exactly is a period? A period is something that happens every 28 days to all people who have a uterus. Every single month, a lining of blood fills up the inside of the uterus so that if you fertilize an egg, it has a place to land and get a blood supply and start to grow to grow a baby. Now, if each month that doesn't happen, that lining is no longer useful, so your body has to get rid of it. And so your body starts to cause some contractions of the uterus that makes the blood come out, and that is what a period is. And what is puberty? I mean, what's happening? Puberty is basically the changes that your body starts to experience when you go from being a person who doesn't have any extra reproductive hormones. Um, things start happening like you start getting some zits, your boobs start growing, hair under your arms, hair on your legs starts to get a little bit thicker, hair starts to grow down there. Yes, I said it. Other things happen is that your moods can start to change. You can feel a little bit more grumpy and you can start to notice that you have discharge. We'll talk about discharge more in the following slides. As this starts to happen, that means that your body is preparing for your first period. That's the earliest signs. And this can take between one and three years. That leads us to the next question of when exactly do you usually get your first period? Most people will get their periods from age 9 until 15. If you haven't had your first period by the time you turn 15, then you probably should check with your doctor. It doesn't necessarily mean that something's terribly wrong, but you want to check it out. If your period hasn't come, it could be because you're underweight or overweight or you're over-exercising or not exercising properly, or your diet isn't good enough to build enough reproductive hormones to start that period. Now, the average age is 12 which I think is really interesting because in 1880, the average age was 17. So as you can see, it's getting earlier and earlier that periods are starting to come. In my opinion, one of the reasons for that is that we're exposed to a lot of things called xenoestrogens, which are hormones that uh, chemicals that mess up your hormones. So one of the easiest things that you can do to take really good care of your body now and for the future is make sure that you really limit your exposures to plastic things like plastic water bottles. You see like I use a um, stainless steel one, plastic bottles, Tupperware, um, Ziploc bags. Every time that you can avoid using those, you want to. Now, we live in a modern society, and sometimes you're not going to be able to do that. So anytime that you can, you want to try to get that done. So we were talking about puberty, and I mentioned discharge. And that is one of the most commonly asked questions that I get is, what actually is discharge? Discharge is that boogery stuff that you suddenly start finding in your underwear. It can be white or creamy, it can be stretchy, it can be yellow or green or brown even. That means it's not healthy. So if it has any color other clear or white and it has any odor at all, that can mean that you either have a bacterial infection or a yeast infection which you have to go to the doctor to fix that. There are over-the-counter remedies to fix some of these. The problem is you have to identify, is it yeast or is it bacterial to know which one to use. Um, this is quite a shock for most people who are going through puberty because it feels kind of messy. It's like as if your nose was running, running and you didn't have any way to manage it. Um, I really advise against using pads. The people will use panty liners, um, the reusable, the excuse me, the disposable ones. They've been shown to trap uh, bacteria and moisture 
um, in your underwear, which can make you have more infection. So if you're going to use a panty liner, go ahead and buy some of the reusable ones off of Amazon. I have some link in my bio, um, and you can order some good ones. They're pretty cheap, and you can reuse them. Just wash them in the washing machine, put them back on the next day, and they didn't don't have that same trapping. And for discharge, you don't need a lot of moisture absorption because it's just like a little bit of fluid as opposed to what comes out for your period. Does that make sense? Okay. So how do I know my period is coming? So remember, puberty can last between one and three years. And so the waiting games, like when's it gonna start? When's it gonna start? When's it gonna start? It can drive you batty. So remember we talked about some of the changes of puberty. You're like boobs, hair growing, acne, changes um, in your attitude, feeling more grumpy, pulling away from your parents a little bit, all totally, totally normal. The discharge is the last thing. As you start having discharge, that is the signal that tells your body, my period is coming. Now, it can come one month to one year after discharge starts. And be forewarned that sometimes there's a lot of discharge and you'll actually think something is wrong. But remember, if it's not yellow or any other color besides white or clear, and it doesn't have any smell, it's completely normal. Actually, the more discharge that you're making, it tells us that your body is super, super healthy. And this is like really thick or goopy. So how do you get ready? People always like, how would I get ready for my first period? And there's a couple of things that you wanna do, and we'll talk in detail more in a few other slides. But the heavy lifting is that to get ready for your period is to get ready. Your period is definitely coming. There's no getting around it, right? So the first thing that you wanna do is have a conversation with your parents. We'll talk about how next. The second thing is to make a period pack. And the third thing is to start to just mentally be ready, thinking like, my body is changing. And I really encourage you to start thinking about your period coming as something positive as opposed to something negative. All throughout the whole history of the world, of the universe, women have told that they're filthy and they're feeble and they're inferior because they have periods. But the reality is, is without periods, there is no future of our society. Without periods, we don't make any more humans after us. It is the most honorable and beautiful thing that can happen and every time that you bleed it is a reminder of how incredibly powerful we are if you think about it in terms of natural selection right evolutionarily we did not choose to give men who appear to be the more powerful species by their physical um, structure and muscle structure no evolutionary ev like biology selected the females to make the humans or to make whatever the species it is it's because actually we were quite formidable and that's really important to remember because I don't want you to enter into your first period thinking like, oh, you know, it's like now I, you know, have like I'm dirty or I'm weak or I'm in fear. Anyways, no, it's actually a sign of complete badassery. And I just want to encourage you to embrace that fully. So what goes in the period pack? Okay, so remember, your period is definitely coming. And the more that you can get prepared, the more comfortable you're going to be. And so if you think about it, this period pack is gonna go in your backpack or your purse because it's easier sometimes for a purse because then if you go to your friend's house, if you go to the mall, if you go to the grocery store, um, you always have it with you. And so no matter what happens, you're not caught without it. What you wanna put in? You wanna put some pads and maybe like a small package of wipes just in case on the first time, a clean pair of underwear in a Ziploc bag. That's really, really important because when you start your period, for the most part, you're going to be surprised. There's going to be a little bit of blood in your underwear. You can just go into the bathroom, wipe your, your, your lady parts, and then put on a clean pair of underwear, take the dirty underwear, put them in a Ziploc bag, and put it back in your bag so it doesn't get any blood on any of your things. It's completely clean. Next, you also want to put a few um, pain relievers in there just in case. It's not common to have pain on your first period, but some um, people do have them, so you want to be prepared. Um, you have to check and make sure that's okay with your school because in my children's school, when they were in elementary school um, and middle school, they weren't allowed to bring any pills of any sort to school. It all had to go to the nurse. So make sure you're staying compliant with like the rules of your school. I don't want to tell you something and then get you into trouble. Next, a couple of dollars or whatever country you're in, like a little bit of cash. It's always good just to have a little bit of money whenever there's some kind of surprise. And last, a little bit of chocolate so that you can have your own private celebration of like, okay, today's the day, like, I turned into a woman. Like, it's actually something amazing, and hopefully you'll have the opportunity to celebrate. Now, 
This is definitely the most commonly asked question. And this is the largest source of anxiety for almost every single young person that I talk to who has not had a period. So I want you to take a minute, check in with yourself. How anxious do I feel about having this conversation with my parents? And just and know that you are not alone, that almost every other person who has not had her period yet is worried about this. And I'm going to give you the exact playbook of what you need to say so it's going to be super duper easy. Remember, don't let the whole thing that get on you that periods are something to be embarrassed or ashamed of. What you want to do is you really want to own it all the way. So you're going to send a text to your mother or father with a funny period that you find off Instagram or Facebook or wherever. And then you're going to say, ha, 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 um, mom, I think my body is really starting to change. She knows you probably took this course. My body's starting to change. I think we should make a period pack. Can you take me to the store so we can go get ready together? Now, for every single one of you guys who is worried about getting your first period, guess what? The same amount of mothers are messaging me on Instagram saying, how am I going to talk to my daughter about her first period? Everyone is pooping their pants over this and no one is talking about it. So you... As you enter into womanhood and prepare for it, you be the brazen one and get in there and say like, listen, mom, we got to deal with this. Like my period's coming. I want to celebrate it. So let's go get pads, all the things that go on the period pack. And then also what you want to do is you want to say, and I want to plan a party. And whatever seems fun to you, this is what other people have done. You can tell your mom whatever sounds groovy. I want to go out for a fancy meal. I want to make a fancy meal together. I want to make a cake. I want you to make me a cake. I want my dad to bring me flowers. I don't care what it is. I want to wear red all day. I want to, whatever. Find some ways that will feel like a celebration to you so that you start off your period and your reproductive life with something fun and beautiful and celebratory. So now you have to think, okay, my period's coming. She said I need to be prepared, but what do I use to get prepared? Am I going to use pads, tampons, cups, or period underwear? How do I decide? My mom has a very specific opinion. She thinks I should use pads. Society tells me this. No, you are starting your period. That means you are becoming a woman. That means you are growing up. You should be the one who has the choice here because it has to be what your body feels comfortable with. Some people will start with pads. Now, I recommend using um, the reusable pads because pads and tampons that you dispose of every single time are super bad for the environment. And there's great solutions that are not bad for the environment that actually work better. But to start, you can order some reusable pads off Amazon. They're very inexpensive. Um, or you could use just for your first period, like some disposable pads so you can keep it in your, your period pack. Um, another option is then to think about either using tampons or cups or um, period panties. Period panties are a great next step after pads because it's underwear that has a menstrual pad built into it with super, super absorbent. It can absorb the blood of three tampons. That's a lot, that's like a whole day's worth of blood for most people. Um, the next thing is tampons. Tampons are really good. I try not to use tampons almost ever because the plastic thing just goes in the landfill and then the actual tampon, the, the, pla the paper part, um, one is bad for your plumbing and two it lasts a long time if it goes into a landfill so they're sort of problematic but they are great to keep in your purse as an emergency thing so like just buy a small pack of tampons and just use them occasionally my all-time favorite thing is the menstrual cup the menstrual cup is a small silicone cup it's like about this big and it folds up and it actually goes up inside your vagina it's super, super easy. The first time, it's a little bit awkward. I have a bunch of videos on how to use it if that's what you want to use. But the good thing is it doesn't leak. You can leave it in for 8 or 10 hours. It has a decreased risk for toxic shock syndrome, which is an infection that's pretty serious that you can get from tampons. And it's completely reusable. So you take it out, you wash it out, and you put it back in. It lasts up to 10 years. So you make a one-time investment, and you've got something to manage your cycle for the next 10 years. It's amazing. I really, really love the cup and it's the best thing for the environment in my opinion. Okay, so a couple of different things. So you've made your decision about what you want to use. Now you need to know, well, how exactly do I use it? So if you're using pads, it's super easy. There's going to be a tab. You pull open the tab and inside will be the pad. There'll be stickers on the back of the pad that you pull off and that sticks into your underwear. And then you just put your underwear on and about every four hours you need to change it. When you take it off, 
you want to roll the dirty pad up and use the plastic that the, the clean pad came in, wrap it around there so that you have this like clean little package. And then that goes in the little trash can on the door or in the trash can in your bathroom. Now, this is kind of weird and a little bit gross, but be careful if you use pads and you have dogs because dogs love to eat menstrual pads. I know y'all, it's disgusting, but they do because it's blood and that, you know, they're meat eaters. And so if they find your pads, so you want to make sure that you're using a trash can that has a little lock on it. If you're using that so that your dog doesn't mortify the heck out of you by running through the house with one of your used menstrual pads at our house, one of our dogs took one and destroyed it. And there was like a thousand pieces of dirty menstrual pad on the couch. It was quite shocking. So don't be that person. A tampon. Easy thing to use. The tricks are to one, use, get the tiniest, tiniest one. They call them slender. They call them junior or teen. That's what you want to use. The first time you use it, you want to use a little lubricant. So you can use some water-based lubricant or the easiest thing is just to use a little bit of olive oil to put on the outside of the plastic part so that it slides inside you very easy. I have strong feelings that before you use a tampon, first you wash your hands. Then you put a little bit of olive oil on. Then you take the tampon out and you slowly, slowly um, insert it into your vagina. Remember, there's three holes. There's the pee hole, there's the poop hole, and then the vagina is the hole in the middle. Because so, you think that's like a crazy question, but lots of people don't know that there are actually three holes. If your hands are clean and you put some olive oil on it, feel free to put your finger inside the hole of your vagina. There's nothing wrong with that. You want to get acquainted with your body before you stick something in there or let anyone else stick anything in there, if you know what I mean. Get acquainted with your body parts. Use a mirror. All of this is perfectly okay. It's your body, and if you're going to love it and enjoy it, it's super important that you get comfortable and, and know it. Something like 60% of, of women and people with vaginas have never used a mirror to look at themselves. Get in there with that mirror and check all the parts out. Really examine it. That's how you get to own your body. Don't let anybody else make decisions for you without you knowing all the pieces and how everything works. Last, the cups. We talked about that. It's a little cup. It's silicone. It's shaped like this. You're going to pinch it in half and then you pinch it in half again. And you kind of have to open the labia, the lips on the outside of your vagina, and then you put it in and it pops out. The trick for the cup is that you want to make sure to just spin it a few times and that makes sure that it's in place. It's going to feel weird. You're going to be like, oh, there's something more than a tampon. But after maybe the first two periods that you have it, you will be so in love with it. You'll forget that it's even there and you'll be like, oh my gosh, it never leaks. It's like a vault in there. The trick is when you take a cup out, you want to pinch it. There's a little vacuum, it like has a vacuum seal. That's why it doesn't leak but you want to pinch it inside of yourself a little bit until you hear like a little sound like that. You want to release that pressure so that when you pull it out, it doesn't pop like a, in which case blood will kind of spray. I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you to, when you pull it out to the first couple of times, do it on the weekend so that you can get into the shower or the bathtub. And if it makes a big mess, you can just shower off really easy just so you can get acquainted with it. These are all the ways that you don't have to have a catastrophe. Um, you can use your pads or your period underwear, and then once you get to the weekend, start using your cup <coughs> so that you can have um, a little bit of time just to practice with it since it's a new tool for you. Make sense? Okay, big question. What happens if I get my period at school? There's several little sub-questions underneath this. The first one is, if you are menstruating, you are going to, at some point, either your first period or a period after that, get your period in school. So you have to make the habit of carrying your period pack with you all the time because you can get surprised. You do want to really listen to the cues because you've been having discharge for up to a year. Sometimes you get kind of used to like, oh, it's kind of wet in my pants a little bit because of the discharge. You got to get a little bit as you're getting closer to your period coming, you got to get a little bit more vigilant. Like if you feel that little of wetness, you need to go to the bathroom and check. Don't ignore it because then you could get more blood in your pants and it can get on your clothes. Um, if you carry a big backpack, I strongly encourage you to carry like a really thin pair of black leggings also in the backpack at the bottom of under your books. That way, if for any reason your pad leaks or anything happens, you have a clean pair of leggings you can just pull on real quick um, just to get you home and you don't have to go to the nurse or bother anybody. The next thing is, is that if you're really freaked out about it, order a couple of pairs of period underwear and just wear those until your period comes. That way there's zero chance. Once your first period comes, if your period starts becoming regular,
regular, which it should after the first year, then what you want to do is like a couple days before your period comes, you could start wearing your period underwear just so you can start to learn the cycle. Soon you'll know, like there'll be some, some each woman, person with a period typically has a specific sort of signals that they have right before they start bleeding. And once you learn that, you won't have to use this. Here's granddaddy of all mortification. What if I'm in school, I start my period, and I have a male teacher, and he says, no, you can't go to the bathroom. In your period pack, what you're going to do is you're going to write a note before even this happens. Brazen people are ready. You think about all the bad things that happen, and you prepare for it. So use this as an act of like, of like your own preparation and badassery. And so the note is just going to not have a date on it and say, excuse me, I need to go to the bathroom right now. I just got my period. There is not a teacher on the planet who is not going to let you go to the bathroom. And if they do, I'm not going to suggest this, but I would probably tell my own daughter to just go to the bathroom anyways, because no one is going to expect you to just sit in your chair and bleed all over the place. And if they send you to the office to talk to the principal, you can say like, I politely asked to go to the bathroom. The teacher said no. I gave him a note that said, I just got my period. He still said, no, I don't know what else I was supposed to do. I'm, I'm guessing actually that teacher would probably get fired for that. So again, once you're prepared, you can stop worrying about it and you can just go on with your merry own life and enjoy yourself. Why should you have a period party? We talked about this earlier. It's because it's really amazing when your body starts to menstruate. It is telling you that you have joined the club of the people on the planet who are so powerful. They are charged with making the future species. Without menstrual blood, our society and our species dies. That is a cause like I just joined the club of the most badass people on the planet. And so I hope that you have a gigantic party. I mean, I just hope that whatever seems super, super exciting and fun that you do and that your parents do with you because it's nothing to be ashamed of. Everything that anyone is telling you, like when boys tease you, you should be like, you don't even know. Like without us, without the females and the people with periods, all of you would be dead in the next generation. So I don't know why you're making fun of me. So we already talked about lots of different ideas. I would love for you to message me and let me know what your great period ideas are too. I'll include them in the next version of this class. It can be scary thinking about your first period, for sure, because it's so unpredictable. You've never had it. There's so many bad stories. Often many of them are incorrect or embellished. And the truth is, is that for the majority of young people who start their periods, it is not painful. That said, for some people it is. So how can you be prepared? Remember, we made our period pack, and all we're going to do is in, we're going to include in that period pack a few pain relievers. The trick with menstrual pain, when you're first having your period, later there's a lot of other things we can do, but um, if you have any pain at all, usually you like have a little bit of a headache and like, well, I have a little bit of a headache, I'll wait and see what happens. Typically pain gets worse. So if you start bleeding, you start having a little bit of pain, especially if you're at school, I would go ahead and take some pain reliever right away to make sure that it doesn't get worse because the worse that it gets, the harder it gets to get under control. So you wanna stay on top of that. On the weekend, you can experiment when you're not at school to see like, oh, is do I have just a little bit of pain or do I have a lot of pain and what do we need to do to manage that? What is it gonna feel like? right? Many, many young people have said, well, is it going to gush out? Is it going to spray out? Is it going to just pour all over the place? And mostly what it's going to feel like when your period starts is not dissimilar from a day that you're having kind of a lot of discharge, although it can be more fluid and watery. And if you've ever had a nosebleed, it is very similar to when you have a nosebleed, maybe less blood. It's not so drippy as a nosebleed, but just like you will feel like a little bit of something coming out of your vagina. And um, and then you just get up and like, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. I can't tell you. Probably every single person with a uterus has had this feeling. They're at a party. They're talking to somebody. They're talking to their teacher. And then all of a sudden you feel that feeling that's happening in that picture. And you're like, oh, excuse me. I got to go to the bathroom right now. Like right now. And they're like, hold on. And you're like, no, I got to go right now because you know there it is. But again, you typically most people do not have a lot of pain on their first period. So I encourage you try not to waste too much energy worrying about it and, um, and just, you know, be prepared and that will take a lot of the stress out of it. We talked about it. If people are teasing you because of your period, 
I think it's just because they're ignorant of how important menstrual blood is. And I would just remind them that, you know, like the future of our society and our species depends on people having periods. It is a very honorable thing for us to to have in our lives every single day and it is a reflection of our power. So you can tease me, but it doesn't touch me. You cannot touch me because I don't have any bad feelings about myself. And in order for you to bully me or tease me, I have to believe what you're saying is true. Like my son is very, very, very smart kid, right? And um, and when he was in school, he came and he's like, mom, they said that I'm dumb. And I was like, look, you're many things. You are many, many things, but dumb is not one of them. Why would you even let that touch you? And he's like, oh, you're right. And so suddenly dumb didn't work as an insult anymore because he knew, he's like, okay, that's the one thing I'm definitely not. And so if you let it get into yourself that like, having a period is embarrassing or shameful, then you make yourself more susceptible to getting teased or bullied. And if you're a person who's like, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. That didn't even touch me. Like it can't even touch me. Then suddenly it's not very interesting to tease you and you can really, um, reduce the amount of attention that you get. Hopefully no one will ever bother you and everyone will be completely supportive. Come tell me if you need help. How will you know if your period is normal? Because I'm going to tell you right now, your period is this amazing like feedback mechanism of your overall health. Ideally, this is what a normal cycle is. You have a 28 to 32 day cycle. You bleed for about four days, soak a tampon pad or fill a cup about every four hours. You don't have any pain. No pain is normal. Pain is not normal. Typically we tell like almost every single person in the whole world will say, oh, cramping is normal. That's because 80% of people with periods have cramping. That tells us that your body needs some additional attention. It isn't normal. You can get rid of almost every single kind of menstrual pain in my clinical years. And as I told you before, that's over 20 years with 10,000 patients. So 28 days, four days of bleeding, soak a tampon or a pad or a cup every four hours, fresh red blood, like just like when you cut yourself, no cramping and no clotting. What is clotting? Clotting is like clumps of what looks like kind of boogery blood, can be small, can be big, can be even the size of your fist. When you have clotting, we need to do something to address that. doesn't mean you have a disease or you need to go to the hospital, but it's telling us that the blood isn't circulating properly. And we know that heavy clotting is associated with more pain, takes longer to get pregnant for people who have clotting, and can be associated with fibroids, which were the little growths, like um, little masses that can be either filled with pus or fluid in your reproductive organs, which are not helpful or useful for you and can turn into something problematic. So if you're a period, and you should have no PMS whatsoever. PMS is all the symptoms that you have before your period. There's 40 different symptoms that can be included in PMS. Breast tenderness, so your boobs can hurt. They can be more swollen. You can have bloating. You can have changes in your um, pooping, like diarrhea or constipation. You can get migraines, acne, a lot of mood changes. Some people get more depressed. Some people get anxious. Some people just get lethargic. Some people have a lot of fatigue. All of these are symptoms that your body is not really harmonized with the way that you're caring for it. Your body is really responding. Your reproductive body will respond to your weight, to how much you're exercising. There can be too much or too little. The quality and quantity of food that you're eating, the amount of stress that you're going through and how you're managing it. And then your environment, like we talked about before, like plastics and other um, environmental contaminants, things that are in your skincare products that can really mess up your hormones. So if you're having any menstrual cycle that's different than the one that we talked about, definitely come and talk to me and we'll try to figure out which of those things need attention so that we can help you to have the ideal cycle. What do you need to do to have a healthy cycle? You need to pay attention to those five things that we just talked about. You need to make sure that you're putting high quality food in your body. That means lots and lots of vegetables. Try for six or eight servings. A serving is small, so even if you have a big serving, that can count as two. Um, Keep it to like one or two pieces of fruit a day. Some people like, I eat really healthy, I have like six pieces of fruit a day. That is good, they have a lot of nutrients in them, but they also have a lot of sugar and a lot of problems that are related to menstrual um, menstrual cycles and menstrual disease are related to blood sugar imbalances. And so we wanna make sure for a healthy period, that not too much um, sugar. Also lots of healthy whole grains, oatmeal and whole wheat bread, um, and really limiting the packaged foods and um, 
fast foods, sodas are terrible because they're full of sugar, um, and junk food in general because it's very nutrient deficient. In order to make hormones, you need quality nutrients and especially to make quality and healthy blood. So as you're becoming a woman, it's time to start paying more attention to sort of the way that you care for your body and then you can see in your menstrual cycle how your body is saying like this is good or this is not working for me. And I think that's really powerful. Men do not have any feedback mechanism. We can identify problems very early before they become disease states if we pay attention to our menstrual cycles. Oh, there we go. Uh-oh, what if you do start having really bad PMS or cramping? Remember, oops, let me go back. Remember all of the 40 symptoms that we talked about around PMS. PMS or the, any symptom that you have that's only between halfway through your cycle until the day you start bleeding. Those are PMS symptoms. Once you start bleeding, typically you'll only have cramping um, or heavy bleeding. Those are the two, or clotting. Those are the three things that might be going on. And so the first thing you do is you look at all the five habits. Are there any changes that you need to make there? And you start with those. You can also come on to TikTok or Instagram and message me and I can help you to think through it also. And if they're really bad, um, some people have a kind of PMS. It's really not a kind of PMS, but that's a good way to relate with it. That is very, very severe where the symptoms that they have before their period are life changing. They can't work. They can feel suicidal. They can want to hurt themselves. They can have very, very bad pain and emotional changes. That's called PMDD. And so um, these are the things that we want to pay attention to because those are early signals that your body needs some attention. Um, as a reproductive acupuncturist, during my clinical career, I saw thousands and thousands and thousands of women with PMS and cramping. And in order to help them, I developed formulas to fix those two problems that, um, that I used in my clinic for almost 20 years. And, um, and I'll tell you a little bit about those before we finish up. And if you want to learn more, there's a couple of different things that you can do. One, make sure that you follow me on Instagram at Forever Brazen, on TikTok, The Period Expert. Those are all places where you can direct message me on Instagram um, or watch videos on TikTok. But hopefully I can be a resource for you from now until the day that you finish menopause because there's so much to learn across that. My mission is to make sure that every person with a period has every bit of information that they need to have a healthy, happy period, to have a great relationship with it, for that to impact great fertility when they want to have babies, 